Christopher DiNuno Jr. asks, what are some great quality tools that you re would recommend everybody have as a beginner? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, look, I, at the very beginning, you need yourself a complement of screwdrivers, flathead and Phillips, really two or three of each. You don't need seven of each, like a standard weird screwdriver gift set. I seriously don't think you need that many. Um, you need some pliers, you need a crescent wrench, but you said quality tools. So I feel like the category you're asking about is uh, tools that are accessible in terms of an expense, but that are that will last with you. Um, you know, uh, wait, actually here, I'm gonna grab a pair. Uh, Irwin, Irwin, actually, There's a bunch of tools from Irwin that would satisfy this question. Um, they make vice grips. They're the inventor of the vice grip. I think they're the inventor of the vice grip. I don't want to ascribe talents they don't have, but I think they invented the vice grip. Irwin is, they also make quick clamps. They make these guys. Um, and frankly, for a beginning maker, spending the money on a pair of these is a tremendous, a tremendously smart thing to do. Uh, these can be incredibly useful. Uh, these are uh, speed clamps, so you can operate them one-handed and draw them in and clamp stuff down. Uh, you literally can never have too many clamps. You could just like allocate a little bit of money every couple of months and buy, buy six of these a year. And after a few years, you're gonna have, <laughs> I mean, I think I've got like 30 here in the shop. I would say these guys are great for beginning makers and it's not necessarily the tool you would consider. The other thing I think that all beginning makers should have are Forstner bits. Uh -huh. These happen to be Irwin's, but I don't recommend any brand of Forstners over another specifically because I have not found a humongous qualitative difference between different brands of Forstner bits. I tend to like the ones that have uh, serrated edges instead of just two horns to do their carving. Uh, specifically, yeah, here's, here's the alternative. This is a serrated, a serrated edge here, and this is just a one sort of leading leading uh, edge to do the cutting. I find these a little more stable, a little more reliable, but that's a small difference. Forstner bits are one of these things that, when you're just starting out, you you kind of not you're not going to discover these on your own. Uh, this is the kind of tool someone has to tell you about, and I I I, I love explaining to people how useful these are. You could do some fairly impressive machining with these with nothing but a drill press. In fact, with nothing but a hand drill. Uh, they are very stable in terms, of the, in terms of the holes that they drill. And as long as you've got the center point, you can actually drill a hole that's not in the middle of the material. Like you could drill a hole where some of this is exposed and you'd still go down. Uh, within reason, you should probably put another piece of wood over here, et cetera, et cetera. But Forstner bits allow lots of modified drilling in weird situations. And you can buy a set of these for like 30 bucks and it is totally worth having. This is one of those tools where the super cheap versions aren't much worse than the expensive versions in my experience. And I'm mostly drilling plastic and wood with these. Yeah, no, that's all that I drill with these. So it's, they're not getting a ton of abuse. Forstner bits. It's a great question. Uh, George Farron asks, do I have a favorite EDC knife for around the shop? Uh, it goes back and forth. I'm gonna grab one blade here. Um, uh, obviously I use X-Acto blades all the time and I have a number of handles. I actually really dig this handle, which is made by Fiskars. Um, it's got an orange rubber uh, rubber tightener over here, and it's got two different slots that big and small blades can fit in. It holds blades very securely, and I like the weight and feel of it. This is sort of a cheaper X-Acto, I think. Yeah, this is an X-Acto handle. 
Um, it's a cheapo, but I also like the form factor. It feels good to use. But lately in the cave, I have been using um, this incredible uh, mat knife that I bought in Tokyo at Tokyo Han Hans, Tokyo Hans. Um, I really like the long rake angle of this. I like the uh, activation. <laughs> Norm just took a photo. I like the activation of it. Um, it's not quite one-handed, or I guess it's sort of one-handed, uh, but for mat knives, which I've really never found the perfect one, this is close. This is darn close. Um, once you have it, once you have it closed, you can't open it. You can't stick the blade out, which I like. I like that it's secure. Uh, but yeah, it's it's these three guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see here. Austin B wants to know what I would change about my tattoo. What I would change about my tattoo. Um, so back in 2019, I think. No, 2018. In 2018, I uh, I got this tattoo. This is my first tattoo. Actually, technically, it's my second tattoo. The first tattoo is a unicycle that I did a stick and poke on my right big toe. You're welcome for that image. Um, but I love this tattoo. I use it, frankly, every single day. And I don't think that there's anything I would change about it. I don't think there's anything I regret about it. I, I, I'm a little sad that the refined little numbers that were drawn are starting to fade, but I always knew that that would happen, that the, the crispness of, a, of the first blush of a tattoo eventually goes away. Um, I love the color. Yeah, I use this thing every single day. I have no regrets, no changes. I will, I would, I'll stick with this one. DGMA asks if I ever use folding rulers that they've never seen me use one. I do occasionally, but it's more often for like home stuff where I've got to get a measurement out on the ceiling in some weird spot and it's hard to snake a tape measure through there. I have folding rulers here, but yeah, it is not a common tool for me. But um, John England says, Really love the content from your visit to Jim Henson Studios. That shop looks like a dream. I totally agree. Any thoughts on making your own puppet Waldo? Yes. Really specifically, they uh, not a puppet Waldo, but actually I want to replicate and make some of the same kinds of puppet mechanisms that I saw in the Henson shop. There is this, when you're, Looking at those puppet mechanisms in the Henson shop, I'm looking at the knife edge of five plus decades of institutional knowledge. And it might look sort of like, well, I can see that someone just hand soldered this and this was put there and there, that's hand soldered there and then that screw was tapped. It's like, it looks pretty straightforward, but there's a deep wellspring of knowledge that got to that point. And I took a ton of pictures of one of their puppet mechanisms because I wanted to replicate it because it looked like a fun day of machining, number one, or fun several days of machining. Two, I kind of wanted to walk down the path of that institutional knowledge. That's the kind of sympathetic magic I like to engage in when I'm replicating something like that. And I have rarely replicated mechanical things like that, but, they all watched me at Henson as I'm taking tons of pictures. And literally when I stopped, they were like, you sure you have enough? And they weren't joking. They were like, make sure you take all those pictures you want. Cause they were like, we would love to see what you build from, from your reference material. So yeah, I think there is definitely uh, some puppet mechanisms that will come up soon on the channel. Um, there is a bigger build that I'm slow. I'm doing a slow burn on right now. I'm hoping to pick it up later this year that involves some mechanisms that will be informed by what I learned at the Henson shop. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us even further, you can by becoming a tested member. Uh, details are, of course, below, but it includes all sorts of perks and we're building them all the time. You get advanced word and behind the scenes photos of some of our projects questions, you get to ask direct questions during my live streams, and we have some members-only videos, including the Adam real-time series of unbroken, unedited shots of me working here in the shop. They are weirdly meditative. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you on the next one.